you. Um, I am just really excited to be in India. I love India and um, I'm just so appreciative of our team for hosting me um, and Samson um, during this time, which is such an exciting time for the Indian wash sector. Water and sanitation, um, it's, uh, are, there's so much progress, but still so many challenges in both of those. And so this week has given us a glimpse of what are some of those remaining challenges in a pretty stark fashion. So we've, we've seen challenges related to overall water quantity, supply, um, water resource management initiatives that are going well but that are much needed to be scaled. Um, also challenges related to operation and maintenance and, of existing pipe water schemes um, and then also questions about the, the ultimate uh, disposition and treatment of fecal sludge now that so many toilets have built, been built across India. So we've had a chance to visit with community members and government officials about, about these challenges and I've really enjoyed learning a lot and listening um, to get, uh, get an update to understand better where things stand today in terms of water and sanitation in India. Yeah, so climate change is something that communities are living and most experiencing through impacts to water. Um, and that's in all of the nine countries where we're working. And India is no exception to that. There are um, sometimes situations with too much water, with um, cyclones and floods. Also, sometimes there are water shortages, uh, springs drying up and, and water levels reducing. Um, and then also issues with water quality, all related to climate change. And so um, these types of challenges are things that the Water for People team and its partners are working on in, in India. Um, I've actually had a chance to visit a potential new partner earlier in the week um, in Uttarakhand, a state which is actually in the lower Himalayas. And they've been um, working quite a lot on spring shed management and protection, um, doing water balance, using supply, demand, understanding better what's happening in these recharge areas, and then actually working with communities on different actions that they can take to increase the recharge of the springs in these areas. So this is such a sensitive area, an important area um, for all of India, because as it's known uh, to be the water tower of South Asia, the lower Himalaya supplies so much water um, for the entire country. These actions are, are really critical and really, in my mind, potentially a, a look into the future of water for people as, as water scarcity only only increases and the need for such action is, it becomes so much greater. Yes, yeah, so it, it, there's no doubt in my mind that um, the global community, the Indian government is absolutely focused right now on, on ensuring access um, and universality of services, drinking water and sanitation um, in India and then across the world. That is our commitment, our global commitment to 2030. Post-2030, there's no question that there's going to be huge challenges still remaining on ensuring the supply of, of water um, around the world, dealing with uh, the impacts of climate change. And so some of the things that I've seen this week, I think are actually insight into the future of Water for People post-2030.